Hey, thank you everyone for coming to this uh, linguistics webinar uh, for SOAS University of London. Our speaker today is Bamil Dile Oluwokere, who is trained as a lawyer, but he's also a Nigerian English, Nigerian Pidgin English writer, teacher, and translator. He's the founder of Pidgin English Akata, a virtual Pidgin English school, and the author of a pedagogical grammar of Pidgin English. So we're excited to have him today here today with us to share his perspectives on Nigerian Pidgin English and its uh, role in Nigerian society. So thank you for joining us. We look forward to your presentation, which will be about 30 or 40 minutes, and then we'll have time for questions and conversation from our participants afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Um, just as Joe said, my name is Bamidele Olowokere. He actually did a great job pronouncing my name. It's a compound name, not easy to pronounce, but he did a great job, you know. And I want to say a very big thank you to Joe, to Vasiliki and the entire team um, for making this possible. It's, I, I take it not a light um, platform, but I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful. Thank you. I will be talking to us today about demystifying Nigeria Pigeon English. I'm sure a good number of us have been hearing about Nigeria Pigeon English. So I'll be talking along those lines just to educate us on what Nigeria Pigeon English is all about. And um, to start with um, the content of today's presentation, um, just a minute, please. Um, I'll be talking on the concept an overview of Nigeria Pidgin English, likewise definition of Nigeria Pidgin English, as well as um, the key characteristics of Nigeria Pidgin English and relevance of Nigeria Pidgin English and the usages of Nigeria Pidgin English. If you have any question, please just feel free to ask me the question at the end of this presentation. Um, All right. Nigeria is a multilingual country of over 500 languages, and it's also a heterogeneous society. We have more than 250 ethnic groups that are enshrined in the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. But amidst all of these 250 ethnic groups, we have three major ethnic groups. They are Aousa, Igbo, and Yoruba. Aousa, Igbo, and Yoruba. The Aousa represents the northern part of Nigeria. The Igbo represent the southeast, and um, the Yoruba represent the southwest. These are the three dominant ethnic groups in Nigeria. Nigeria has a population of over 200 million people, over 200 million people. And it's interesting to know that more than 70% of this population understands and converse with Pidgin English virtually every day. And in a particular place called Wari in Delta State, we, are, we have over 900,000 people there that speak Nigeria Pidgin English as their first language of conversation every day. They speak Nigeria Pidgin English there as their first language of communication. Aside from worry, we have other cities like Asaba, Benin, Portacot, Yenogua. They also speak Pidgin English there. And each of these cities has, has, has a minimum of 500,000 people, minimum 500,000 people. So you can imagine how many they are all together that will be speaking Pidgin English when you merge all the cities in Nigeria together. Now, these are just few cities out of the innumerable ones we have in Nigeria. Nigeria Pidgin English is a language that everybody 
that is born in Nigeria do not need to go to school to learn. We don't need to go to school to learn it. Once you were born in Nigeria, it's a language that you learn. You know, you grew up with it. I never went to school to learn Pigeon English. I was born and I was raised with it. And that is how it is with everyone that is a Nigerian. Interestingly, when we have foreigners coming to Nigeria, they also learn this language effortlessly. They learn it easily because the moment they begin to mingle and relate with us, they find it very easy to learn this language. We have so many Chinese in Nigeria and a good number of them understand Pigeon English very well. In fact, some of them even speak it and they speak it very well because I've actually related with a good number of Chinese and Lebanese and they understand this language very, very well. Nigeria Pigeon English is a nationwide language. It's a nationwide language, even though it's not yet um, recognized by the government as a formal means of communication. Nevertheless, it is a nationwide language. It's a language that wherever you go to in Nigeria, you find people conversing with it. If Nigeria has 36 states. So if you go to any of the 36 states, including the federal capital territory, Abuja, you find people conversing with this language. It's something which is alarming. It's, it's interesting when you travel around and you see how people are conversing in this language. That is not to say that we don't have people who speak the conventional English, that is British English. We have people who speak it and speak it very well. But this has become a, a norm for all of us in Nigeria, particularly when we are conversing, we use Pigeon English. Maybe for, if you go to the market, for example, you want to buy something, you don't have to speak to them using conventional English. You go there and you speak Pigeon English to them. Likewise, even in schools, we have a lot of students. When I was in school, I do speak British English, that is conventional English to my friends, but more often I speak Pigeon English with them. This is because this is what we speak every day, every time. You know, it's part of us. It's part of us. It has become our native English. I, I call it Nigeria native English. That is this language. And this is why it's a nationwide language. Everyone belonging to the different ethnic group. We have over 250 ethnic group in Nigeria. Everyone understands this language, everyone. I am still here to find a Nigerian who does not understand Pigeon English. I've not seen any, even those who are in the inter, inter um, far north, they still understand this language. They may not be speaking it every day, but they understand it, you know, let alone those who are in Lagos. Now, Lagos is um, the most, um, the commercial, center of Nigeria with a population of over 20 million. I'm sure you've been hearing about Lagos, Lagos, Lagos. Now, everyone in Lagos, everyone in Lagos, over 20 million people understands this language. In fact, a good 90% of those who reside in Lagos actually speak this language very well because you can't be in Lagos and not understand Nigeria Pigeon English. You would hear people speak it on the streets, in the marketplaces, um, different everywhere you go you find people speaking it even in their homes in amusement parks so many places you know you find people conversing in this language and it's it's interesting actually it's really really interesting you know now i'll be talk, talking to us now about my own definition of nigeria pigeon english you know i have been able to define it you know and this is what i've been telling people that nigeria pigeon english is a version of English, just like we have other versions of English. You know, Nigeria Pigeon English also is a version of English. There are so many versions of English we have today. You know, the conventional English we all know is British English, the one which Joe, you speak all the time, and, and um, American English as well. You know, 
and there are other versions of English, like as you can see on the slide, there's Chicano English, that is Mexican American English, there is Ameridish, that is Jewish American English, there is Chinglish, that is Chinese um, type of English, there is Hindi, that is the Indian type of English, and several others, even there's Australian English, there's Canadian English, so many versions of English. Now, Nigeria Pidgin English, is also a version of English, is a version of English. And like I said earlier, it is our native English, our homegrown English for all of us who are Nigerian, you know, who are Nigerians, all of us who are Nigerian, this is our native English. It's a language that consists of homophones and homonyms homophones and homonyms that cut across different ethnic groups we have in Nigeria. We all know what are homophones. Homophones are those words that, you know, sound alike with a different meaning. Homonyms are those words that are spelt alike with a different meaning. And we have a good number of these homophones and homonyms in Nigeria Pidgin English. A good number of them come from Aousa ethnic group, Igbo ethnic group and Yoruba ethnic group. And an example of this is this three syllable word I have here, which is wazubia. You know, the first part of that word, wa, comes from the Yoruba ethnic group. It means come. The second part of the word, which is zo, which comes from the Aousa ethnic group in the north, means come also. And the third part, bia, which is from the Igbo ethnic group. It also means come. And the other words that we have in Nigeria Pidgin English that stems from the different ethnic group, as well as these three dominant ethnic group. For example, we have words like um, abuki that we use in Pidgin English. It's actually from the north, you know. We have words like ikebe, you know, ikebe, you know. We have words like um, um, oyimbo, Oimbo is a word that stems from the Igbo ethnic group. And there are so many others. Even from, from, from um, Isoko, there's a word um, we use in Pidgin English, Koro, Koro, K-O-R-O, Koro. It actually stems from Isoko ethnic group. And there are so many, so many. This is actually one of the beauty of this language. You know, it's, it's something that is interesting to know that you find words from different ethnic group in Nigeria Pidgin English. And that is why it's been easy for everyone to speak this language. Once you were, um, once you were born in Nigeria, it's very easy because you find words which are in your own native language, either Yoruba, Aousa, um, Igbo, Ishakiri, Igbo, Yoruba, whatever language, you find words from those ethnic groups in Nigeria Pidgin English. So it's very easy for anyone to, to learn it, you know. Now, the relationship of Nigeria Pidgin English with the conventional English is actually a symbiotic relationship. I call it a symbiotic relationship. That is a mother to child relationship. As you can see in the diagram I have here, um, the conventional English, that is British English, you know, is the mother of Nigeria Pidgin English. In fact, a lot of um, words, a lot of dictions that we use in Nigeria Pidgin English, you know, they come from the conventional English. And it's, for example, we still use the word hi. That is the first person pronoun I in Pidgin English. It's still the same word. We also still use the word go in Pidgin English, even the word come, you know. For example, if I want to say that I'm going, in Nigeria Pidgin English, I will say, I they go, I they go. That's just to let you know that I'm using the first person pronoun, I, you know, and go, you know. Those are two conventional English words. And there are still so many words that we use that come from the conventional English, you know. So the, the relationship is a symbiotic relationship, you know, a mother to child relationship. And that explains, you know, the history as well. You know, the history, you know, when um, during the slave trade era, you know, that was actually when Pidgin English came into Nigeria, you know, and um, it grew up from, from the, the Martians, 
you know, the British Martians, the Portuguese Martians, those period, you know, that was when Pidgin English actually um, came into Nigeria. And till date, we still make reference to that time. You know, we still make reference to that time when we're talking about the history of Nigeria Pidgin English. I hope everyone is hearing me. I hope I'm still clear. Okay, all right. Now, the features of Nigeria Pidgin English. Um, there are a number of features I have here. There are still so many, but I just highlighted these ones because of this presentation we're having today. The first one here is Nigeria Pidgin English is a trans-ethnic language is a trans-ethnic language spoken by all ethnic groups in Nigeria. We have over 250 ethnic groups. You know, it's a trans-ethnic language. None of these ethnic groups can say that this language belongs to them only. It's everyone's language. You know, everyone, it is our national, sorry, it is our nationwide language. It belongs to everybody, you know, everybody and the good thing about this is that this pidgin english like i've said earlier is a language that we find easy to learn once you are born in nigeria you don't have to go to school to learn it once you are born in nigeria you grow up knowing it you know it's a trans ethnic language spoken by all the different ethnic groups we have in nigeria you know, that is the first one. The second one is, it's a Pan-African language. It's a Pan-African language in the sense that it's a language that actually you find other Africans, particularly West African, you know, they, they converse with. When you go to Ghana, for example, you hear of Ghanaian Pidgin English, you know, I'm sure a good number of us have heard about Ghanaian Pidgin English, Cameroonian Pidgin English. It will interest you to know that there are a good number of words in Ghanaian Pidgin English, Cameroonian Pidgin English, which stems from Nigeria Pidgin English. For example, the word abeg. Abeg is a word which means please in Nigeria Pidgin English. They use it in Ghanaian Pidgin English, in Cameroonian Pidgin English, even in Creole that they speak in um, Syria alone. They use abeg. In fact, is is a is a word that cuts across West Africa. You know, it cuts across. There's nowhere you go to in West Africa. Once you say abeg, they know what you're saying. Likewise, there's the word wahala, wahala. You know, wahala means trouble. You know, anywhere you go to um, Ghana, uh, Syria alone, Cameroon, they understand this word. Even waka, w a k a, waka, which means to walk. You know, it's, it's, it's a word known to um, all those who speak Pidgin across West Africa, you know. So it's, it's, it's a language that identifies with other countries in West Africa. You know, it identifies with other countries in West Africa and not just in West Africa, even in East Africa. When I was in Uganda, I got to know that there's a place they called um, in um, there's a place in Moroto district where they call a motorcycle, they call it Okada, just like we call it in Nigeria Pidgin English. They call a motorcycle Okada. You know, you want to call a motorcycle in Pidgin, you say Okada. So in Uganda, somewhere in Moroto district in the, the eastern part of Uganda, they call motorcycle Okada. And also, there's a district in Uganda by the name Jinja. There's a district in Uganda by the name Jinja. You know, Jinja is actually a word we use in Pidgin English, which means to, um, to stir up oneself, you know, to, stir, to, to spoil yourself up a little, you know, to spice up yourself, you know, spice up yourself. If I want to use the word, I would say, Joy, Jinja, your swagger, you know, Joy, Jinja. by taking a drink, you know, something like that, because I can, you know, so um, that's just to let us know that in Nigeria Pidgin English, you find words, you find words, other um, African countries in P Nigeria Pidgin English, you know, and the, the, third, the third feature, hello, 
Joey, can you hear me? Yes, I just stopped the video to make sure the audio quality is a bit better. But oh, okay, going. okay, because I wasn't seeing you, so I wanted to yeah. be sure. Okay, so um, the third point is that it's a dynamic language. It's a dynamic language, just like you can see on the slide. Um, you can have, we have um, words, you know, um, like pi and kaput, you know, they are two different words, but with the same meaning, you know, pi means to die, kaput also means to die, you know, so we have a good, so many words that actually have the same meaning in Nigeria Pigeon English, and it's very easy to, 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 to find such words when you speak this language, it's very, very easy. You just get to know them easily. You know that these words mean the same thing. You know, it means the same thing. And fourthly, um, it's humorous. It's, it's humorous. It's a language that is sweet to the ears. It's very, very sweet. A lot of people um, find it interesting, you know, when they hear Nigerians conversing in this language. You know, when I was in Uganda, for example, I had so many people in East Africa approach me and tell me that, um, told me that they like hearing our pigeon English because it makes them to laugh, you know. So, um, they enjoy it for comedy and you know all sorts, you know. So it's it's humorous. It's 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 humorous language. And five, it's a language that is easy to learn. Nigeria pigeon English is amongst the few languages in the world today that are easy for one to learn very very easy it's not difficult for anyone to learn nigeria pidgin english all my students it doesn't take them longer time before they start conversing in this language after one or two months of training with them they begin to speak nigeria pidgin english fluently you know that's just to let us know that it's it's easy to learn you know now the relevance of nigeria pidgin english internationally and nationally. I'll start with national, that is for us in Nigeria. The first thing I have to say is that this language answers the question of our national identity. It's the only language we have that answers the question of our national identity. We don't have any other language that can actually satisfy this purpose. Nigeria Pidgin English is the only language that answers the question of our national identity. That is because it's a language that is nationwide. You know, it's a language spoken nationwide. It's spoken by the vast majority of Nigerians, the vast majority of Nigerians. And even um, those who are not Nigerians that live in Nigeria, they also are able to Pick words, are able to understand these words, you know, even though they are not Nigerian, but if they are, if they are married to Nigerian, for example, they find it easy to learn this language, you know. And even when Spura, for example, you know, the easiest way people get to know we are Nigerians is when they hear us speak this Nigeria Pigeon English. For example, I was in Kenya sometime um, years ago, and the moment people heard me speak Nigerian English. The next thing I said is, you're a Nigerian. I say yes. And I said, how did you know? It's a national identity. And secondly, secondly, it's it's it solves the issue of our national unity. You know, for some time, we've been having different ethnic crises, you know, you know, we've been having different ethnic crises. And I keep telling people that the only thing we need to do now is foundational, which is to ensure that we make Nigeria Pigeon English a national language. You know, it's already a nationwide language, you know, but we need to recognize it and make it a national language because it's the only language that unites all of us. You know, when when we come together, maybe I'm Igbo, you are 
Yoruba, another person is Hausa. The only language that we can speak amongst ourselves and we all will understand easily is Nigeria Pidgin English. There is no other language that I, I, I can speak to someone who is Hausa or Igbo or Isoko or whatever tribe, you know, and they would reply me, you know, to show that they understood what I was saying. There's no other language other than this Nigeria Pidgin English. So it's a language that solves the issue, you know, of our um, national unity, you know. Now coming to international um, relevance of Nigeria Pidgin English, it promotes transboundary relationship. It's a language that pro promotes better transboundary relationship between Nigeria and the Committee of Nations in Africa and also all over the world, Europe, America, you know, it promotes better transboundary relationship. People are able to relate with us, you know, better, you know, by getting to know such words that we use in Nigeria Pidgin English, you know, they are able to relate with us better because this language actually portrays our culture as well. It portrays the different cultures, values, norms, you know, and ideals that we have in Nigeria. You know, so for foreigners who come into Nigeria or that um, um, we get to meet abroad, you know, they're able to relate with us, you know, by virtue of getting to know some words, you know, or by learning this language, they're able to relate with us better. And Secondly, it gives rise to um, language tourism, you know, in Nigeria Pidgin English, you find words, you know, in different, um, in um, words of um, other um, countries, for example, um, in, in, um, in East Africa, Swahili is a language peculiar to Kenya, Tanzania, and um, some parts of Uganda. Now, we have words in Nigeria Pidgin English that um, are words that are homophones, you know, which you find in Swahili language. For example, um, there's a word in Nigeria Pidgin English. It's called um, toto, T-O-T-O, -T -O, toto, you know, it means a woman's um, private part. Now, in Swahili, there's a similar word that you know, is pronounced as umtoto, umtoto, it means a child in Swahili. And we have several others. For example, we also have the word um, ingozi. Ingozi in Swahili, it means skin, you know, but in Nigeria Pidgin English, it's a name of, um, of, of, of a person. You know, we also have the word um, bata, you know, you know, and there are se several other words, several other words which you find in Nigeria Pidgin English that are also in Swahili, you know, and it's like that with several other languages all over the world, you know. Usages of Nigeria Pidgin English, usages of Nigeria Pidgin English. Nigeria Pidgin English um, is a language that is used mostly for business, trade, you know, business, trade, you know, we have um, we have a lot of us Nigerians, you know, when we want to buy something, for example, like um, you want to buy something from the market or super supermarket, wherever, you know, the, it's, you find a lot of us speak pigeon, you know, we say how much, you, how much you they sell them, how much be this, you know, it's not, you know, and we all understand it, you, you know, we all understand it. It's also a language that we use for public um, campaigns, all kinds of campaigns, be it religious campaigns, political campaigns, all kinds of campaigns. You'll find a lot of people during the campaigns speaking Nigeria Pidgin English. You know, our, our election is fast approaching. The 2023 election is fast approaching, you know, and you'll find a lot of people, you know, politicians communicating with the people in Nigeria Pidgin English because they know that this is the language the people understand the most, you know. They know this is a language everybody understands. And even they themselves, they're able to express their thoughts better, you know, using Nigeria Pidgin English. And also it's a language that has very good um, 
advertisement um, value. You find so many um, companies, so many companies are using words, you know, that are peculiar to Nigeria Pigeon English. You know, you find so many actually. There are lots of telecoms in Nigeria that they use words of Nigeria Pigeon English. There's even one major one that uses the word berekete. You know, it's a it's a telecom in Nigeria. They use the word berekete for one of their um, ad, um, adverts. You know, even um, even um, so many even DSTV actually has a package they call Yanga. You know, one of the DSTV packages is called Yanga. Yanga is actually a word in Pigeon English, and there are so many others, so many others. You know, so it's also a language that has better cultural adaptability. You know, you want to adapt easily. It's a language that would enable you, you know, to blend easily with us in Nigeria. And also, um, it's a language that is good for poem. You know, for poem. You know, you need to hear some poems in Nigeria, Pigeon English. They are very interesting. For example, there's a poem um, I, I taught some of my students some time ago. Um, it's, let me just say some part of it. It's yam fufu ot, yam fufu cold. Yam fufu in the pot, three days old. You know, yam fufu is, um, is um, a, 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 a powder-like meal, you know, that um, we eat in Nigeria, you know, and, um, if you're in Nigeria, for instance, you would have heard of fufu, you would have heard of eba and all those kind of things, you know. So there, there are poems in Pidgin English like this one and several others. Even there are idiomatic expressions like in my, uh, in my book, the Pidgin English book, Learn Nigeria Pidgin English Volume 1, you'll find a good number of um, idiomatic expressions and proverbs in that book, you know, and also it's a language that is very good for music. You know, that's why you see most of our music, a lot of them, they are in Nigeria Pidgin English. In fact, there are lots of songs, you know, most of our artists, you know, they use Pidgin English, you know, to, 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 to make their songs, a good number of them. You hear of Davido, Whiskey, Two-Face, most of their songs are in Pidgin English. You know, we have movies, it's also good for movies. We have good, a good number of movies, so many, you know, that are in Pidgin English. You know, it's also good for stand-up comedy. We have so many comedians who actually use this language, you know, to converse. We have people like Basket Mouth, I Go Die, you know, so many. It's also good for sitcoms, you know. So these are some usages of this language. There are still many more, but I just highlighted those ones, you know. So um, um, coming to before I um, I hope we're all hearing Joey. Yes, every, okay, still okay. here. Thank you. Okay, okay, because it's as if I'm just talking to myself, you know. <laughs> so I just want to be sure, basically, and I hope I'm not rushing. No, you're good. Okay. All right. So simple expressions in Nigeria Pidgin English. I want to just teach us some of um, um, words, you know how to express yourself you know like um i don't know if pio palo is on this um is on this um is 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 here pio palo de Carlo actually um was in cameroon he learned pigeon you know cameroonian pigeon and the words he learned in cameroonian pigeon sometimes um you 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 get to know that those words are also in Nigeria Pidgin English. When I'm speaking to him sometimes and I say those words, he says it, we understand each other, you know, because um, like I said, um, it's a pan-African language, you know, because we have words that are peculiar to, you know, to us in West Africa, in Nigeria Pidgin English. So if you want to express yourself in Nigeria Pidgin English, you know, simple expressions, you want to say what's up, for example, you say waiting the sop. What's up? Waiting the sop. I don't know if I should ask um, Joey. Would you like to tr try to pronounce waiting the sop? Uh, waiting the sop. Okay, good. Let me clap for you. I'm clapping for you. You know, it means what's up. You know, that's actually how we say what's up in Nigeria Pigeon English. You know, another word is um, if you want to say how are you, you say are you day, are you day, you know, are you day, you know, how you day. So in response, I would say, I did can't pay, I did can't pay, I did can't pay. You know, another expression is, um, how your body? I want to ask you, how is your body or how is your health? I would say, how your body? 
higher body, higher body. Now, in response, you can say, my body day can't pay, my body day can't pay, or my body day inside cloth. You know, there are different expressions, you know, different expressions we use. Another um, expression we have is, are you picking? Now, picking means child in pidgin English. And it's also, um, you find that word in um, Jamaica Patois. It also means picking in Jamaica Patois. That is pikini in Jamaica Patois, you know. And there, there are other expressions, you know, but I just sort of just putting these ones here just for us just to, to learn, you know, so that um, we can have a feel of this language. So um, having said um, all, that I have to say, I think I will want to um, hear if anybody has a question or maybe something to um, advise on or, you know, I think I'm, I'm good. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so, so much, Pamela Delay. We're, it's great to get to hear a bit of your passion for uh, Nigerian Pidgin English and your insider's perspective on the language as well. Uh, we do have a bit of time for questions. There's been a couple of people that already wrote questions in the chat. So I could read some of those out for you and then we could see if there's more questions after that. Um, I'll start with the second question actually. Nina Watson was asking about uses of the language and you did touch on that some of that already. But could you say more about um, how much Nigeria Pidgin English is used in writing? Are there books or newspapers or magazines or is it used on social media? Do you see it used in written form or is it primarily used in the oral form? Okay, um, now in terms of literatures, we don't have so much literatures in Nigeria Pidgin English. In fact, um, that is actually part of what I'm working on, you know, to encourage people to, to write, to write books, you know, in Nigeria Pidgin English. I have written two books, Nigeria Pidgin English Volume 1 and Volume 2, you know, and I know there are a couple of books, but um, they are not much, you know. I know there's, um, there's a book um, on Pidgin English written by Olaro Timi, um, there's another one I saw recently by M.K. Uswa, you know, but they are not much. They are not much at all. They are not much. What we have that are in Nigeria Pidgin English mostly are in movies, movies. You see a good number of our movies, you see they are in Pidgin English, you know, likewise our songs, music, you know, there's so many of our songs, they are in Nigeria Pidgin English. A good like um like um, um Davido, for example. We know of Davido, we know of Whiskey, we know of Two Face, we know of um um a good number of our artists, they are they sing, you know, using Nigeria Pidgin English. But in terms of literature, we still have to work on that. You know, we have to work on that. And like I said, it's Though it's an informal language that we speak in Nigeria at the moment, but the reality is it is a nationwide English. You know, it's not yet um, recognized by the government as a formal means of communication, but even people in government, they speak this language. They speak this language when they are doing their political campaigns because they know the only language that the people can understand and can relate them better with is pidgin english you know so and i'm hoping you know that soon the government would actually recognize nigeria pidgin english because with um, recently we had more people pushing for this you know we have i've actually heard of one of the emirs in niger state telling the government that they need to recognize Nigeria Pidgin English, you know, and as, as a formal means of communication, you know. And I've also thought about this, you know, in some platforms, like when I was at NTA, you know, um, NTA is um, the national television station here in Abuja. I was actually talking on, on the government, calling on the government to recognize this language, you know, to, to give it formal recognition because this language is, is the only language that we can call our own, our own English. We don't have any other English. And it's the only language, like I said, that you find everyone that is a Nigerian, you know, every one of us, we speak it. Whether you are Aousa, Igbo, Yoruba, when we converge, you know, when we converge, you know, the only language we can speak that all of us understands, we have a common understanding, you know, is Nigeria Pidgin English. We don't have any other language. If, 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 for example, if you are from um, the northern part of Nigeria and I'm from the, um, the western southwest, where, you know, and I want to converse to you, the only language I can speak that I know you can answer me, you know, is pidgin, you know, pidgin, you know. So in terms of literature, 
we don't have much literature yet but i'm hoping you know that soon we are, we're going to have more literatures more books you know more books more poems you know that will be written in nigeria pidgin english i hope i've answered that question yeah yeah that does answer it can i just ask about uh the bbc's uh nigeria pidgin uh website that they do have you seen that and from your perspective is it very popular in nigeria because that that is a written form of the language whether it's very natural or very popular i don't know yeah bbc pidgin is doing a great job they are doing a fantastic job because most of the news that um, you find uh, on in uh, maybe like um, you find uh, social media, they are, they also you know translated in pidgin, you know, and there are lots of people who you know have access to BBC Pigeon and they read it. I actually, I follow their news a lot. You know, I follow their news a lot. Like um, um, when they were talking about the, um, there's a news that um, was going, um, going on in Nigeria some time ago. I actually got to know of that news via BBC Pigeon and they are doing a great job. They, they have, there are lots of people who also listen to BBC Pigeon, a lot actually. I may not be able to tell you the exact number, but I know they are in the millions. They are in the millions because BBC Pigeon is well known, well known all over Nigeria. And not just in Nigeria, but even Africa is well known. And they're doing a fantastic job, very, very great because they are even helping to promote this language. You know, had it not been for, um, for organizations like BBC Pigeon and, you know, and several others, you know, and individuals, this language would have gone into extinction. You know, this language would have gone into extinction, you know, because, you know, prior to now, there were people who feel that this um, is bad English. And I kept on telling people, this is not bad English. It's, it's, it's a language, you know, that belongs to us in Nigeria. It reflects our norms, our values, our ideals and everything that pertains to us in Nigeria, it reflects it. You know, we even have names, you know, pidgin English names. Um, some of my um, postings on, on Instagram and Facebook, you see I post some names, pidgin English names, like God Day, God Pekin. You know, there are names, you know, pidgin English names, and there are so many, you know, and that's just to let everyone know that this language is very, very key. And I'm happy that we have BBC Pigeon. You know, because you are doing a great job, very, very great job, very, very great job, very, very great job. Yeah, I got another question for you. This one from Gwyneth James. She was asking about some clarification about what you said earlier when you said that Nigeria Pigeon English is easy to learn. Who is it easy for? Do you mean Nigerians or non Nigerians? And in what ways is it easy to learn? Um, and I guess I would also add for, is this only for people who already speak English or do you find for people who don't speak English already, is it still easy to learn Nigeria Pidgin English if they haven't had English first? I meant it's easy to learn, firstly, to those who are born in Nigeria or foreigners who live in Nigeria. Right now, we have so many foreigners in Nigeria. We have Chinese, a lot of them. We have Indians, we have Lebanese, so many. In fact, I can't tell you the exact number, but the few ones I've come in contact with, they understand Nigeria Pigeon English. They don't even have to go to school. I don't have to teach them, you know, because they, 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 they relate, you know, by virtue of their relationship with Nigerians. They're able to learn these words, you know, effortlessly. That is one. Now, to those who are in the diaspora, you know, like my students, for example, it doesn't take them much time um, um, before they begin to speak this language. You know, max two months, three months, they begin to speak it very well because like it's, it's the, the words are not hard to pronounce. Like when I asked Joey, when I asked you to say within the SOP, for example, you, just, you said it well, you know, and I'm sure, um, that word would now be part of your vocabulary. You know, it would be hard for you to forget that word because you already said it with your mouth. You know, so anywhere you see that word, waiting the stop, you know what it means. Like it means what's up. You know, and that's how it is. It's it's easy to learn. You know, it's not it's not hard. You know, it's not hard like um, 
some native um, languages, you know, that are peculiar to us in Nigeria. Those ones, they are very hard, you know. You know, we have easy ones as well, but we have some very hard ones that even me myself, I find difficult to learn, you know, but Nigeria Pidgin English is very easy to learn. For those who are born in Nigeria, it's very easy. You don't have to go to school to learn it. For those who live in Nigeria, any part of Nigeria, in any of the 36 states or the federal capital, you don't have to go to school to learn Nigeria Pidgin English. You learn it when you meet people, whether in the office, in the school, in the marketplaces, in the mall, you learn it because you have people speaking in Nigeria Pidgin English. And over a short period of time, you also find yourself conversing with this language. Likewise, um, for those who are um, in the diaspora, you know, it's just a matter of time. The moment you are able to um, get someone to teach you or you listen to the songs, you get to listen to a good number of Nigerian artist songs. You learn these words as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's easy. It's not hard. It's not, yeah. it's not hard you, at all. You mentioned it was easy to pronounce, but I was glad you didn't ask me to pronounce the word with the KP, with the double articulated labiovelar stop, because that one may have been more, more difficult to pronounce. Uh, there's <laughs> another question here from Lilian Hodieb. Elian uh, says, very rich and interesting presentation. Thank you. You Thank mentioned you. the Wari people who use Nigeria Pidgin English as their first language. Do they yeah. also speak an indigenous Nigerian language? And if yes, what's the relationship between the two languages as far as this population is concerned? Do you know more about that area and other languages that are spoken there? Now, Wari, they have their native languages. When I was in Wari in 2019, I was in um, Okwe. I was, I was in Wari. Wari has about eight or 10 local governments. We have Okwe, Wari South, Wari not so many local governments, you know, and they have their native languages. They have their native languages. But the, the major means of communication, the major, the major form of communication in worry, anywhere in worry, is Nigeria Pidgin English. In fact, when I was there in 2019, I was there for um, almost three months, you know. Every time I moved around, I heard people speaking Nigeria Pidgin English in the palace of the king, um, um, when I was doing advocacy, you know, lang um, linguistic advocacy and other work, I found people speaking Nigeria Pidgin English. They have their native languages as well, but they speak those native languages, you know, perhaps maybe um, when they are in their homes or maybe in their, in their, um, in their um, should I use the word, um, um, in their social fold, you know, they, they use those languages, but it's not, you hardly find them using their native languages, um, unlike the way you find people in Wari conversing in Nigeria, Pidgin English. Everywhere you go to in Wari, everywhere on the road, supermarket, in fact, it's their first language, you know, their first language means of communication. They have other languages too, but you find them speaking Nigeria, Pidgin English more. Um, there are some languages in Wari. Um, uh, I can't, uh, pronouncing some of those languages um, might not be easy for me, but they have a good number of native languages. And those native languages, some of them have words, you know, in Nigeria, Pidgin English. They have words, you know, in Nigeria, Pidgin English. And it's, it's interesting. When yeah. you hear worry people speak Pidgin, you know, it's, it's in, in fact, they have a peculiar accent for Pidgin in worry you know, which is peculiar to worry, is peculiar to Bini. You know, mm -hmm. when you go to those cities that I um, mentioned, um, worry, Bini, Portacourt, you know, you hear people speak Pidgin there. Their Pidgin is very interesting. You know, they have a peculiar accent. Yeah. You know? So there's some, some variation in the way people speak it in different areas. Yes, something like that. You know, something like that. It's, it's peculiar to them, very yeah. peculiar to them. Uh, I have another question here from Ben Carson. He says, thank you for the presentation. I'm new to linguistics and recently wrote about how using indigenous language as a means of instruction in, uh, is beneficial to primary education in Africa. Do you know if you would find standard British English in classrooms or would the teacher use Nigeria Pidgin English or one of the three dominant national languages? <laughs> well, like I said earlier, the government is yet to recognize Nigeria Pidgin English as a formal means of communication. Now, 
Aside from that, everywhere you go to in Nigeria, you find people conversing in this language. It's a conversational language, but it is still informal. Now, in schools, the teachers, the lecturers, when they want to deliver their, um, their lecture, they use conventional English. When I was in school, for, for example, um, the lecturers would come to class to deliver lecture using conventional English. That is British English that we know, or um, American English. They, no lecturer would go and deliver lecture using Nigeria Pigeon English because they know the government is yet to recognize it formally as a means of communication. You know, so they won't do that. They won't, you know. But when you go to a lecturer's office, for example, which is, you know, a private, um, um, a private, um, private dealing between you and the lecturer, of course, the lecturer can speak to you in pidgin English because he knows that is our conversational English, our informal English, you know. So it's, it's, it's like that everywhere. You know, even in the government offices, when the government is addressing the public, you don't find them speaking pidgin English. You know, when they're making a public, a formal broadcast, you know, you don't hear them speak pidgin. You know, they can, they may speak pidgin privately, you know, but when it's um, a formal occasion or an official assignment, they speak conventional English. Have I um, answered that question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, just a follow-up question on uh, the use of English in schools and English in general in Nigeria. We had a presentation just over a year ago on Nigerian English, and, and the argument there is that there's a type of English spoken in Nigeria that's distinct from, you know, British or whatever different kinds of English, and in, and that could be destigmatized and treated as a national language, uh, which is distinct from Pidgin because it's closer to world Englishes. And if you just accept Nigerian English as the national language in the schools, that could function as a language of national identity, something that has more international uh, use in terms of understanding and being able to understand it. So I'm just wondering what your perspective is on the importance of recognizing Nigeria Pidgin English as a nationwide language versus the another proposal that we can focus on, Nigerians could focus on uh, Nigeria English, which is closer to these international Englishes as a marker of national identity, which is something that would be easier to implement in schools, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, um, conventional English, British English, is the formal means of communication in Nigeria. It is stated like that in the 1999 mm -hmm. constitution that British English is our formal yeah. English. Yeah, so the formal. proposal would be to change that and make it Nigeria English as the, for, as no, the formal. No, 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 no. That's, that's not what some of us are advocating. We're not saying... Oh, yeah, I'm saying that. I've heard other people advocate that position. So I'm no, wondering, no, what, no, what is no, your no, response? No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not advocating that because British English is a universal language. You know, it's not just in Nigeria. In fact, there are, they are, they are billions of people who speak British English. It's, and in fact, there are lots, lots of languages, you know, um, there are lots of languages in the world, but British English still remains a universal language. So I'm not saying that the government should set aside British English, no. What I'm only advocating for is give Nigeria Pidgin English a formal recognition that it is a conversational language. That's what I'm advocating. The reason being, we, we've had people with wrong mindset that Nigeria Pidgin English should not be tolerated, you know, amongst um, youths or teenagers because they feel is a, it's, it's bad English. And I've told such people it's wrong because the relationship between Nigeria Pidgin English and British English is a symbiotic relationship. We have a lot of words in Nigeria Pidgin English that stems from British English. For example, um, there's a word in, um, in British English, um, B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, bell. Am I correct? Uh, I think borrowed from French, but yes. Is it French? 
Well, it's also used in English. In English, yes. I know it's French, but I say it more in English because um, I think it's a name or something like that. It means, mm -hmm. uh, is it a girl or something or something? Uh, like it that. means beautiful in French. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Now, in Pidgin English, that word means belle. It means it's pronounced as belle. It means stomach. Mm -hmm. Stomach. It means stomach. That is human stomach that's what it means you know you you would hear some of us say ah my my belly they pain me that, that is my stomach is paining me you know so i tell people what i'm advocating for is for the government to recognize nigeria pidgin english as a conversational language you know a conversational language that can be used for communication you know, in different platforms so that people won't start having this mindset that it's bad English, it's um, illiterate English. In fact, there are some people who feel that those who speak Pidgin English, they are illiterate. And I, I kept on telling them that they are wrong. You know, they are wrong. They are wrong, mm -hmm. you know. So what I'm advocating basically, you know, it's for the government to recognize, give it a formal recognition, you know, that it's, it's a conversational language because in reality, it is a conversational language. It's the only language that is spoken nationwide. We don't have, we don't have any other language in Nigeria. I mean, ethnic language that has that attention, that has 70% of our people speaking it. There's no other language. There's no other language. I'm from the Southwest. You know, the population of Yoruba in the Southwest um, is about 15%, you know, of the total population. I've traveled a number of states in Nigeria, you know, and I hardly, when I go to the North, for example, I hardly find people who speak Yoruba in the North. You know, but I've, I, I've, I met several who understood Pidgin English. Because when I go to meet them, I say, are you there? They'll answer me, I did fine, you know? It's a language that is spoken across the country. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a nationwide language, but it's not yet a national language. And that's what me yeah. I'm advocating that the government should recognize it as a conversational language, because in reality, that is what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, that helps us transition to what will probably be our last question as we're running out of time here. But there's a question from Olawale Akimbade, who says, for a Nigerian pigeon, also known as Naija, to rise to the status of national language, what areas do you think we need to work on to make it more prestigious? For instance, I think its inclusion into the school curriculum will add value to it more. Absolutely. I share the same thinking. I share the same thinking, you know, because um, um, in our schools right now, we teach native languages like Aousa, Igbo, Yoruba, you know, particularly in the high schools. When I was in high school, I was taught Igbo. I was taught French as well. I was taught how to speak French. I learned some words in French when I was in school. I was taught Igbo. I was taught um, a bit of Aousa, you know, in school. It's part of the school curriculum. But I wasn't taught how to speak Pidgin. I, I grew up learning it, like I said, you know. So it would be good, you know, for the government to actually include it you know include it not necessarily for students to be taught how to speak pidgin english but like i said as a means of communication you know if the lecturer feels he could express his thoughts better in pidgin english he should find it should be allowed to do it you know because i've discovered that sometimes when i want to say some things to some people it's better said in nigeria Pigeon English for purpose of better comprehension. You know, it's better said in Nigeria, Pigeon English. So I share the same thought, just like um, um, Uluwole um, said, it would be good for the government to actually look in that direction. It will help a lot. It will help a lot. It will help a whole lot, you know. That's great. I think that might be a good note for us to end our conversation on. 
Uh, so let me say thank you to everyone who came and participated. Uh, there's more questions and comments in the chat, and I can forward those to you, but we delay so that you have those as well. So thanks everyone there, especially Josephine Alexander, who has a lot of good points that she added to the chat that we weren't uh, able to get to in the conversation. So thank you, especially to Bami Delay for putting thank this presentation you. together and sharing your perspective with us. We hope everyone enjoyed this time together. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. And to all the team, thank you so much as well. Thank you. Thank you.